Welcome back everyone to episode 4 of our Beginner's Guide to Factorio. There's a few things we've changed since the last episode and although I don't think I specifically or explicitly mentioned it, I was going to do a lot of pocket crafting off camera. I hope you've come prepared as well. One thing I didn't actually do which, well we'll just have to get up green science in order to get green science production going in a good way. I'm going to start producing some of this stuff. What we need to start off the episode doing is getting electronics going because we need automation two for uh, in order to get green science going at all. Now that's going to speed along so quickly in the meantime I want to point out that I actually miscounted the number of red science production I was doing last time so we can see one two three four five pairs gives us ten plus the bookends that gives us a total of twelve per sides we're actually producing twenty four red science packs when I only want to do um, ten per side so for a total of twenty Let's get, uh, yeah, well, these are just gonna happen really, really quickly, but. So I'm gonna eliminate the last two on each side. I noticed this because I saw that we were, um, when I saved the blueprint, which I now have here, I saw that we had 26, okay, that was quick. Um, I saw that we had 26 assembly machine ones and we should only have these two plus 20, so it should only be 22. So I remade the blueprint cutting it off in the appropriate spot, but you will, like me, also have to chop off the last little bit here so that we only have 10 per side. And uh, now we have left enough space for the second one as well. Next things next, we're going to begin making a lot of blue science, some blue assembly machines, otherwise known as, or sometimes more commonly known as assembly machine twos. Actually, I think with with people, I think we no, most normally call them the blue, um, the blue ones. <laughs> so the gray, and then the blue, and then eventually the yellow for the assembly machine threes. So we're gonna start laying out the groundwork for this stuff while these are being made, and we're gonna want a bunch more of them. In fact, so let's just go ahead and do that, and then get more of the grays, and uh, it probably takes us out of it does completely out of iron. So we'll get more iron. Now the plan is, there's other stuff we have to talk about that I've done, but I'm gonna do green science first. And while it's starting to pile up, because we do have, well, I mean, we'd have a few other things to get done, but these are just gonna speed along. So we'll start doing this. And I know that science is just gonna probably be done before I even know it. I'll try to get a few of these things in place before it finishes. Uh, yeah, so this one, two, one, two. We want to actually drop this way and we take with that one so we do it in line with the red. Okay, uh, this may not make sense quite yet, but you'll see in a moment what the method to this madness is. Now I'm just going to go ahead and place these. Um, basically, this is going to be copper wire. This will be our two circuits. For circuits, you need copper wire and iron, which will be going down this transport belt. Then we're going to feed that, which is circuits and iron is all you need for inserters. And on the sides, we'll be making transport belt. This may not make sense to you if you're not familiar with the requirements for green science, which is simply one inserter and one transport belt. Now, I have to say one thing about the setup we have here. It's slightly inefficient, which is a rarity for me. I really dislike anything inefficient, but there's a couple things that you can do to improve this, as far as I know. Uh, I mean, as far as I've like kind of thought about. One is you don't have to do this. We're going to end up with a little bit of a buffer state here. I still like this because it ends up giving you a nice buffer for circuits. We're just gonna drop that down to only allow two at a time. Um, this one as well, down to only two. I'm leaving it as a steel chest though, just because I don't want biters to destroy the chest and destroy all the circuits we've worked so hard to produce. Okay, so these are just like blowing by. You can see that once you get all these labs up and working, <laughs> they work pretty fast. Good, so now we're done with every science that only requires red, we're done with. Now we need red and green to do anything, which is good timing since we're in the middle of getting that done. We want to do this. And then we want to do this. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, 
you can see I messed this up. Something is different about this side versus the other side. I think we want this one down here, actually. I believe they have to spread out by one. We'll find out in a moment. Basically, these are not going to be completely symmetric because in the middle, we're going to have a total of six per side, but we're going to have two row or two yeah rows i guess um so we'll have this one and i'm leaving a space of four between because we're going to want two transport belts and obviously a space left on each side of the transport belt to put our inserters so that actually worked out perfect i didn't even realize that we would get right on the money with that let's go ahead and make more of these um, they're really useful to have in your inventory because even if you only have those you can make um, blue science, I mean, the sorry, the blue machines from the gray machines. That's actually the way you have to do it. So it's nice to have gray in the back um, just uh, stored so you can get blue ones even that much faster. The setup is pretty much complete. So you can see that this is where we'll want to feed our inputs, I think. This will be fed here. I need to come back. So this will go like so. And these could have moved, could have been moved a little bit closer. I did put them a little bit further apart than they needed to be. But this one should just be fine. So we'll get this one to go like this, this one to go like this, and this one will be able to go down without having to move. Okay, perfect. And then what we're gonna have for the other ones, if you're wondering, is an out an output belt. And this will curve and connect here with whoops, actually it'll connect here with the output belt from this side. So you're, you may be wondering, why am I doing 12 per side? 12 and 12 uh, instead of 10 and 10. So you can think of these 10 as being represented by this group of 12 and this 10 being represented by this group of 12. Why is that? Well, because green science takes five seconds to produce I'm sorry, green science takes six seconds to produce, where red science only takes five. So the ratio you want to observe is having six of these for every five of these, so that at any, the rate of science production per second, and at any given second, we're producing the same number of science packs. If we did five and five, we'd only have five sixth, I mean, of a f five sixth of five science packs <laughs> uh, for this one. Um, we wouldn't have an equal number, is just what I'm trying to say. I think it is 5, 6 to 5, whatever that is. 4.2 more or less science packs of green science. So to keep it even, we just need to respect the ratio. If it takes 6 seconds to produce these, then we need 6 of these for every 5 of these we are making. And in that way, we should get an even number, an even throughput. That's probably the word I was trying to say. Okay, so let's uh, just merge these, even though I'm only going to start off by doing the bottom. I can do the top off camera. I'll do this trick throughout the series. Whenever I don't want to um, bog us down too much in the, like the minutia, once I've gotten to the point where, okay, so let's eliminate this just for a second. That's where I want to go then. Uh, once we get to the point where it's pretty obvious what you'll have to do, I'm going to leave it, the rest of it to off camera. Yeah, it actually should be enough to power all the rest of this once we get our power lines in. Now, unfortunately, we don't have electric distribution two, the advanced one. Once we do, it's gonna be a lot easier to get this done. Because right here, it gets a little bit messy. I guess we can go here. It doesn't really matter which whoa, which corner we go in. Uh, okay, so we're gonna want one right here, and I think we need one here too. So it's kind of a, a more power lines than we need. It when I'm pretty sure that just having no, I, I think I actually need this power line here. Uh, just having one of the medium electric poles would be sufficient for like these three, but. Okay, say love you, we don't have it. Now I've been putting all this down and you may have been trying to follow along in sequence, but again, I want to kind of enforce an understanding of what's going on. 
we have copper wire and that with iron is going to turn into circuits circuits and iron turn into inserters i should actually show this circuits iron oh yeah and of course gear wheels which is why i have these factories on the side these are all going to be gear wheels these are going to be our transport belt and this is the inefficiency that i i didn't mention or didn't actually talk about Green science does take one inserter and one transport belt. Well, the trick is whenever you produce a transport belt, you are actually producing two transports belt, transport belts. So technically, if you divided the output of this evenly among both these lines, you'd have enough. I find that this is just kind of, it's easier to just overproduce the transport belt than it is to actually get the, uh, the splitting done perfectly. You would think just a one to two splitter would get the job done but um, you really have to like get it perfect, otherwise the transport belt will end up bogging down our uh, green science production. And obviously these, they're currently in grays. Now that does mean that they'll be a little bit slower to start, but I'm okay with that. Now what we wanna do is we can use very easily the yellows for taking outputs off the line because these are gonna be really slow. I'm just gonna put the yellows on the uh, I guess we should put it on the inside. Ah, okay, I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's do it this way. There we go. Now on this side, we're also gonna want to dump with the yellows this way. So we're gonna put the yellows on the middle again, facing the same direction, which is convenient. And we're gonna take our reds and we're going to, oh, I missed one here, didn't I? Nope, not that one, we want that one. Now we have it correct. Now our reds are gonna draw and dump. So they're gonna be the same way. Just drag down, drag down, drag down, and drag down. And voila, there we go. So this is all set up. And if we duplicate this exact setup up here, we'll, be in, we'll have both sides up and running. The only thing we're really missing now is getting our copper and our iron to the appropriate spots. Okay, so we'll put our splitter in here, and we want a splitter right here as well. Go underground. Okay, that means split right here. There we go. And we want a splitter here as well, because we need this to go without, I mean, if you wanted to do this out of splitter, you'd have to go like up like this, and then down, and then back. So that way you'd be able to do it without a splitter. It just makes more sense to use a splitter here, I think. Now we need to start queuing in all these things. Transport belt, all it needs is one cable. I mean, so one gear wheel and one iron plate. So iron plates, these, I'm sorry, iron gear wheels require two iron plates for one gear wheel. So if we're doing one blue for the output, we want to do two blues for the input. Oh, and that's just what we'll do. And we'll get the gear wheels going this way as soon as we one, two, and one, two. Last but not least, we want to feed iron plate to the transport belt as well. And I think oh, all we're missing is the connection there. Okay, so take a look at this. We have two in, one out. This one has one, two in, well, like one from gear wheels, one from iron plate. So this has two in, one out. This is the kind of convoluted situation where we're dumping into a buffer. This red is taking from that buffer and putting in. So if I ever need some circuits, I can just control right click, take half of that, control right click, take some of that as well. And normally these outproduce the actual inserters. So you'll end up with some stored here, um, which is nice. If you ever want to pick up some circuits, you can always swing by here. But there is a more elegant way of doing this, I believe, but it's very complicated with underground I think you have to use a lot of underground belt and I'm not a fan of it, it doesn't look as nice. So that's why we're gonna be doing it this way. And always be crafting, right? So we'll be doing a bunch of this. Okay, so now everything is working. We have inserters lined up. We have inserters and transport belt lined up. Notice that inserters are a little bit slower than the transport belt and why is that? Because these are producing twice as fast. So you know what, we can just sit here and suction a few of them off. It won't matter, transport belt will back up. Whereas you can see the inserters are basically perfect. And in fact, we can speed this up even more 
if we actually replace these with the blue now. And my favorite thing to do, we can just click and drag. This will speed up a little. So now all we need to do is take this over. I guess we'll just leave it on the bottom. Whoops. Since it'll be closer to its final destination. Uh, we'll probably need to run some of this underground at some point, same way we did with same way we will need to do with red. But for now, we'll just run it over this way. Go like this. Oops, and voila, green science is being produced. Hooray! So now we can actually start doing research with that. In fact, this next one that we want to do is 75, and currently we have 30 labs down, which means it'll take three cycles. You get 30 done, then another 30 done, and then finally another 30 after that. will put us to 90 total, so we'll get halfway through the second cycle before it finishes, but I have another 10 labs, so what I could do, I guess I won't do it on camera, but um, if I just mark this as my next set of 10, I could get this going and do another 10 labs, and then I would actually be finishing this uh, next one in a production cycle of only two cycles. So the amount of time it takes for red to be burned, and we can figure this out, in this case it'd be 30 seconds. So what if my current setup is 30, it's gonna take 30 times three, so a minute and a half for this science to complete. But if I had only two, it would only take a minute. I mean, if I had 40 labs up and only two, it would only take two production cycles, that would only take a minute. Anyways, I don't wanna bog down in the details. Let's try to get to green circuits, but let me talk about the other stuff I changed off camera. I built over here in the top left this steel smelting area. Now that's actually the reason why I want to get this advanced material processing next because I want to get my steel smelting up but I don't want to build any more stone furnaces. We already have a lot of stone furnaces lying around and they aren't good for anything in the end game except for to turn into boilers and considering we already have what is this 48 plus another set of 24 so 72 we already have over 72 stone furnaces built that's way more than we're ever going to have use for in terms of boilers, which means that this is just like buying, or sorry, building, crafting, burner mining drills. Those also end up being, you know, pretty useless. So we try to minimize the number of stone furnaces we build. And steel furnaces are also potentially something you replace in the end game. But in my opinion, steel furnaces can be used all the way through the end game. I mean, electric furnaces eventually have advantages that you don't need to burn oil, uh, coal for them so they have lower potential production, I mean pollution, since I think, uh, I mean you can power the electric ones with solar power which is a little bit more efficient. Technically since we have to burn coal for the, if we had to burn coal for the electric mining, uh, so the electric smelters, it wouldn't be any, any benefit at all. But if you actually have to, uh, if you can run them on power, it is uh, solar power, clean power, it is a benefit. Okay, so that's enough talking about that. I don't know if there's anything else. Oh yeah, so I wanted to mention off camera, I, this is what I set up was this little, just right in between these two smelting lines, I put five um, furnaces down. And I actually got, I think this is overkill in fact, I got four of them doing steel, which is probably more than I need. Um, so we'll just pick up all that steel. That's a ton of steel and we're gonna need a lot of stone actually. So what I ought to do is get this one to start doing stone as well. Okay, there. So let's just let this one do stone because we're going to need more stone than we have. Uh, yeah, the ratio for these is 10 to 6, 10 stone to 6 steel. And I don't think we're at 5 to 3 in terms of stone to steel as it is right now. Okay, that said, we'll just, I'll be building a lot of the stone furnaces, or steel furnaces off camera, but let's get to circuit production. Circuit production is not too difficult. The thing I wanna do is leave room, one, two, three, four, because circuit production is actually going to become, let me do this in a separate row, its own bus. So this is actually going to be circuit production eventually, somewhere down here, whenever it comes back. Um, this will be part of the bus. We want four lines, just like we have four for iron, four for copper, green circuit is used so commonly that we actually want four for circuit, green circuit as well. Eventually this will feed, one of these lines just will completely peel off and go into um, red circuit production and then we'll put red circuit on the line instead. But for now, just we'll want a lot of green circuit so we'll build, we'll actually get four wide 
bus of green circuit. So let's get to it then. So I just wanted to make sure we had enough room to start it, which means we probably have to start a little bit further away than we would otherwise. Um, I think this is okay to start. This looks good. Looks like plenty of space. Uh, yeah. Actually, we can probably go, I'm, I'm min-maxing a little bit too much, but let's do it right here. One, two, three, one, two, three. So I think I did three rows of three, I mean three groups, four groups of three. So this should be 12 total. Um, and now we're gonna want to do one, which is, uh, I mean two, which are in, like right in the middle of the middle one of the three. So you can do this pretty easily with power lines. Wherever the line breaks, that's your next one. Okay, line broke here, so this is my next one. And line broke here, so this is my next one. And it looks like I did successfully get four groups of three. And once again, we'll just put these down next to that. There we go. Okay, so this is the same setup we already saw with copper into circuits. And so in the middle here, we're actually gonna have an input line. So actually this first one is gonna be exactly where the input line is. For iron, because remember circuit requires copper wire and then iron. It doesn't actually require copper directly, just only through um, the copper wire. So it's perfect, that's actually gonna be our output for the, for the bus. Now we just need some splitters to get copper going here. You can kind of guess what this is going to be, our input line for the copper wire. Don't need that last one. And we're going to use blue again. And actually, it looks like we're going to need some more blue. So let me go ahead and start producing that. Uh, all right. One, two. Let's do it this way. One, two. One, two, one. One, two, one. One, two, one. Here we do the same thing. We need four. One, two, three, four. If you're lazy, you can just one, two, three, three, four, five and take out the middle one. <laughs> oh, so we're short by a little bit. That's okay, we can start getting the red ones down while we're waiting. In the same way, we're gonna want the output to go to the far side. So I guess we'll do this and take this one away. We won't need that then. Um, so we'll put the red in the middle. Output will be in the middle. And the one closest to the power line will be our input. Have a few of those, so input, 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 input. And this is another situation where obviously this is gonna be duplicated on the other side so that we have a balanced line. But I'm not gonna do that on camera because it's easy enough once you've seen this done and now you've probably almost seen this done you like three times, well, twice at least. So we'll just go ahead and add this and then actually I'll just right click that so I don't have to go through the list. Shift left click all these. And there we go. So we're all set, all we need is power. Unfortunately, this is, because it's one step too far, we actually need power on the outside as well, which is, normally what I'll do is I'll put, these will all be, will be alternating um, medium electric poles, and then I can get rid of that outside one. But for now, we don't have that capability, so just have to do it this way. And there we go. So the one thing we're missing is iron. Split this, and there we go. Okay, so I think we're good then. I think we've set up half. Obviously the other half is gonna go down here. Looks like we're gonna need some more blues down here, but it's just gonna be mirrored, exactly mirrored. And then we don't have enough, I can see, but we're gonna start like that, and just this will be this, this will be this, and you get the point. But you can see we already have green circuit being produced on the line, which is perfect. Now, obviously we're draining too much this one. So what I should do is, let me just quickly merge these two so that this second line helps out to fill the gaps. That usually helps. But after you do this a few times, you should probably just borrow from the left-hand side or mix the whole thing in the same way as we did way up here. Do it just a complete four-way equalizer. You can do, just do that again after you've stolen from it a few times. And if you're wondering, there will be stuff being stolen from iron on the left-hand side too, but right now we have the trees there. We don't even have our, our center set up. 
So let's actually do this now that we have green science and green circuits. I, I'm way delayed. I should have been doing this already because the last thing I wanted to show you is just that I'm going to get that done. And I think we can call this episode to a close here. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'm probably going to clean up this and I might be just drawing power over to the stone area itself so I can just get a pretty large um, setup. I might even just do some kind of temporary smelting center. I don't know if that's necessary because basically we only need stone brick for the smelting centers right now. Eventually we'll get a whole smelting center set up for the brick itself as well, but it's just not necessary in the beginning. Okay, so let's um, get this going as well. Okay, uh, so that's what I'll be doing. I also need to replenish all my inserters, get these all up to like having 50 extra. You can see that we're actually out of transport belt as well, down to 99, so I'll probably get another 400 of that or so. Really, I just want to top up so that we don't have to slow down at all. And actually what I can do is I can steal from this line since we don't quite have this producing anything quite yet. But this should be going pretty quickly. Um, yeah, let's get a few more of these. Might be able to just do this on camera. We get lucky. The nice thing about this green circuit production is you just plop these down directly without having to think about how many spaces in the middle. That's really nice. So, okay, there we go. So that's all set. We just need power and all that. And there we go, advanced material processing. What's something we should get next? Well, military two is not bad. Let's think about, um, oh yeah, I wanted to do bullet damage because I actually do want to showcase a little bit of military here as well. 26 minutes into the video, I wonder if I should just wait until the next video. No, I want to showcase it so I can do a little bit more off camera. So again, we're already going to be doing the balancing of those two lines we showed you, the line for green science and the line for green circuits. Do those things off camera. But the other thing I wanted to do is a little bit of military stuff. So I didn't get enough firearms, unfortunately. I'm going to have to run back up. This is not enough. We're probably going to need two gun turrets as well. I don't have yet. I'm going to just show you how to we can just clear it. This base is pretty minor down here on the map. Um, so it shouldn't be too difficult for us to let's get three of these maybe. Let me drag these um, repair pads, repair packs I should say, into my inventory. It looks like I have some 20 science sitting here. I'll get rid of that. Uh, we got, needed heavy armor. You need 50 steel and 100 copper for this. Definitely worth it. It's the first armor. I don't even build the light armor. It's so not worth it. And the biggest thing we're missing right now is a submachine gun itself. So let's actually just do that. Next. We're getting pretty close to those biters as well. So we're only gonna deal with these two turrets and you know what, I'll put that in my inventory as well. So the point is to kind of do what's called turret creep. You put one down, put some, we don't even need this gun anymore. We're gonna be doing it all from here. So, I mean, this gun is useless. Uh, this might be too much ammunition though, so there we go. And we'll just continuously make ammunition for the rest because two is at least something. So again, this is turret creep. Slowly but steadily, we're just moving. Oh God, we're gonna help out. You can see this doesn't do too much damage to us, but it's because we have two turrets helping us out. So now we just turret creep a little bit further. Okay, help out for the wave. And then as soon as we can, Looks like a good point in time. Turret creep down a little bit closer, and you're gonna have to start moving a little bit slower as you get further south. But we're starting to get um, almost to the biters now. I mean, to the spawners. So that's good. And we're really barely moving now. Definitely need to help out. Bullet damage two is just about to tick. There it is, right on time. Let's get bullet shooting speed two, if we can. That'd be nice as well, just to increase the speed of these things. And let's actually start gunning down the spawners themselves. Obviously the, the winning game here is to slowly gun down the spawners. If you can do that, you can slowly eradicate the amount of spiders you have to kill each wave. So it's definitely the goal. We're even gonna turret creep a little bit further. Control right click, give them some ammo, and get going. In fact, this one's a little damaged, so let me shift two, repair these up, and then get back to space barring myself a little bit more. Are we getting hit by that worm? Now the heavy armor is actually really effective as you can see. So ideally what you'd be killing these bases with um, shotguns. Shotgun shells are much more valuable against, or much more efficient against spawners. 
My machine gun really is only good for these lights, light fighters. Let's go ahead and just push a little bit further even. And that's going to be the one that can actually start killing like this worm. Let me kill that worm for it. Okay, we got that. Let's prepare this as quickly as possible. You can see it almost died there, actually. <laughs> just barely got it in time. So this is uh, combat. Combat. Uh, this is turret pushing in. You can see we're gradually eliminating these. This is the important thing, is to gradually eliminate them. Um, eliminate the spawners. Let's turret creep this one back up now. Uh, too much. Too much. Too many. As soon as you can kill the uh, just a few of the biters, they'll start... Oh, they actually destroyed my darn turret. That's not good. All my ammunition. We might have to back off here. We've done a pretty good job getting this uh, getting this far, but unless we can build, yeah, we don't have enough to. So let's just pack up and go. Ah, I'm surrounded. Heavy armor does such a good job, though. It allows you to really get away with. Okay, thank you for bullets shooting speed a little bit too late, unfortunately, but this should be fine. So we're getting pretty close to dead. Okay, 20% life or so, and we survived. So what we've done is we've taken down a little bit of this base, but the base is just so big. I'm going to have to continue to do my turret push stuff off camera. <laughs> that was a little bit exciting. I almost died there. Let's uh, put this down, repair it, and I'm actually going to call this video to a close here. So I'm going to go back up. I'm going to get more iron, which is obviously what we need so we can get more bullets. All these things. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is I did replace my iron axe with a steel axe. So I usually just go down, go cut down some trees until my last iron axe breaks. And then I build a bunch of steel axes, in this case 18. I, wanna, I was pretty zealous about it. Maybe not overzealous, <laughs> but that's quite a few. That'll last me probably the rest of the game. Uh, so we'll get this steel set up as well. We're just going to be building basically a ton of these steel furnaces, like 74, just to start. And then what do we? what is it that we need? Yeah, we need more stone. So we get that stone, and we can build another 14. Absolutely. These, all of these are going to be steel furnaces, so we really don't have a limit of how many steel furnaces we can we want to build for quite a while. But like I said, that's going to call this video to a close. Uh, off camera, build a lot of stuff. Build everything. Have well, no, no, don't don't build burner mining drills though. Don't build those. Small electric pole. So they're in the same spot. So I clicked the wrong one. I need a few more. So that said, I will see you back for the next episode. And in the next one, what are we going to cover? Let me think. We might. I, the order is going to be different than in my first series, so we went into, I think we were going to go into oil next. Um, we might go into military science next instead, because I think that's the next stepping stone. If we look at research, yeah, maybe the next thing is military, getting military science up and running. Or I might need to automate something else. I'll think about it and I'll get back to you at the beginning of the next episode. Until then, just prepare by cutting down the trees and uh, getting a whole bunch of supply and, I mean, a whole bunch of all your uh, prerequisites for building stuff built up, splitters, all these things. And until then, thanks for watching and take care.